Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that I have some surprise for you today. Instead of just watching me doing yoga by myself. So I just want to let you know that I do have some friends. And some of my friends, hey! <laughs> some of my friends are really talented, like this one right here. My name is Sarissa, and today she's gonna, gonna show some fun moves, um, camel and then wheel. But before we go there and get all physical about it, let's just have a fun talk with her. <laughs> After all this many years, um, can you remember your first yoga class? Oh, definitely. Um, I really didn't know what to expect at all. And I remember the instructor being a little patient and upset about the fact that I was a total beginner coming into her intermediate class. She came to me, she showed me one cycle of the sun salutations. She's like, okay, this is how you do it. And then I remember she went off teaching the rest of the class and then she came back to me. She's like, what? Don't you remember? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I think she was sort of trying to teach me a lesson that please don't come to intermediate class if you're a beginner. As challenging as the class was, and as harsh as she was, I was hooked. After that first class, I was like, I definitely have to come back for more. I did the TT course with Adrian. I was really curious about learning about every posture and the effects that it has on the body and the mind and how it affects the, the function of the organs and all that fascinated me and I really I really wanted to take that apart and dissect it and really just kind of get a closer look at it. And if you have the intention to teach, really be there first for yourself. Because if you really give to yourself first, then it allows you to have a lot more to offer for other people. If you have the interest, go for it. Every day that passes by, I'm, my knowledge builds, my experience expands, and I feel like I'm perpetually learning. I feel like I'm always a student. Above being a teacher, I feel like I'm, I'm a student first. And that's what I love about doing what I do, is because it allows me to there's so much room to grow and there's so much there's so much to yeah, so much to learn and that's what keeps the interest and the practice really fresh because there's so much you can add on to it. Ostrasana, dropping back to Urgodanyarasana. Um, I remember the first time I saw this demonstrated and sometimes with new movements or new variations to postures that we're familiar with, we see them and initially there's sort of a, oh wow, can I actually do that? And uh, I remember when I first did it myself, I sort of had this unexpected, oh, it was actually quite easy. <laughs> so rather than having that um, hesitation, be it fear or, oh, can I or can't I do that, just let yourself. Um, explore, diving back into the unknown, and coming back into a known place. See where it takes you physically, energetically, emotionally. You know you're ready for Ustrasana, drop back into Urvudanirasana, when you can uh, hold your Ustrasana for quite some time, with a feeling there's a struggle with the breath. We want to be very careful with our bodies. So if you have that hesitation, you might like to have someone spot you. So today working with Ustrasana, using our Ustrasana to take us into our Urpadhanirasana. In our Ustrasana, we have the option to either lay the tops of the feet down but for today's drop back into Urdhva Dhanurasana, we'll tuck each of the ten toes under, having the heels pressing back. We want the tailbone lengthening down just to give a little pull of the abdomen up. Bring the hands to the heart center 
and there's the thumb tips rest right on the sternum. You can use your inhale and that inflating of the breath then presses up towards the heart center. Relax the shoulder blades down. The back of the neck is soft. You inhale, extend the arms up. And as you exhale, pressing your hips and thighs forward, bring the shoulder blades down, lean all the way back until your hands make contact with the floor. As your hands press down into the floor, you're going to use your feet to push down and lift up into your full wheel. Adjust your full wheel. Pressing down through the hands and the knees, enjoying your Buddha Vidanyarasana for a few breaths. When you're ready to come back to your Ustrasana, lift the heels really high, give a little pulsing movement back and forth, preparing your body to move forward and land onto your knees. So go down and collect back in. Sit the hips onto the heels, press the hands to the thighs, and close the eyes. For those of us who are fans of back bending, which is not necessarily bending the back, but more about opening the heart center, opening the front of the body getting more comfortable with the part of the body that we can see, which is the back. So what's nice about Ustrasana, dropping back to Urdhva or going from Urdhva back to Ustrasana, is it sort of gives you that extra challenge that when you've reached the point when you're very comfortable and open and happy with your back bends, it just gives you something to sort of step up to. Um, so as we get more advanced with our yoga practice, and our bodies become more strong and flexible. You just sort of take it to that next level. And that's, it's really just about having a little more fun, a little more sort of sense of playfulness, so we don't get too serious about uh, what we can or cannot do.